students today we are going to have the online class of chemistry for class 9 and we will start with the chapter chapter number 4 atomic structure and chemical bonding as we know that due to covid 19 there is a shutdown country wise and so we cannot have the normal schooling system so we have to take the help of this online classes and i think this online class of chemistry will help you with the basics of chemistry before that i want to advise all my students to stay home to stay safe and to wash hands at regular intervals we all together can fight this situation and overcome it so let us come back to the class we will start with the chapter number 4 as i told atomic structure from the name only we can understand that we will learn about the structure of an atom that is how an atom looks like before we come to atom we want to discuss a small thing about matter now what is matter matter is anything and everything that has a definite mass and occupies space so from the two terms that are used occupy space and having a definite mass we can tell that around us everything is matter like with the pen that i am writing this board i myself the table the chair the book everything is matter even air is also matter because they have a definite mass and occupy a definite space think take two minute time and think can you name any two things that is around us but not matter and we are dealing with it every day if you take time and think you can tell you will see that there are some things around us which is not matter like sound like light they are not matter but they are helping us in our everyday life why they are not matter because they are a form of energy so apart from energy anything around us is matter because everything has a definite mass and occupy space now if we want to classify matter now this is matter is a general term isn't it around us everything we can call matter but if we want to classify matter i'm not speaking about the states of the matter like solid liquid and gas i'm telling you that if we divide matter we can get three forms of matter what is it element compound and mixture element compound and mixture you see element what is element element is the simplest form of matter element is the simplest form of matter okay like hydrogen h2 o2 n2 these are the elements why you can see that in an element there is only one type of atom in hydrogen only h is there in oxygen only o is there in nitrogen only n is there so element is having only one kind of matter and if we want to break down element we cannot get any simpler form so element is the simplest form of matter now if two or more elements combine we can get a compound like water like co2 and what is mixture mixture is the combination of two or more any uh, compounds and elements around us generally everything is mixture like air is a mixture the water that we drink is a mixture so around us each and everything is mixture now scientists thought that if we want to see the basic building blocks of this element of this compound and this mixture that is what is the smallest particle that each and everything is made up of and when they start dividing each and everything the smallest particle that they got out of anything that they call atom okay so this atom is what atom is the smallest particle of each and everything it is the fundamental fundamental building block of each and everything now about atom i want to tell that john dalton gave five postulates about atom that is john dalton studied about atom and 
he told five characteristic properties of atoms. What were they? Number one, he told, atom is the smallest indivisible particles. Atom is the smallest indivisible particle. Okay, so the key term in this point is that indivisible. This is the key term about the first point. What can you understand from the point indivisible? That is, atom cannot be divided further. Atom is the smallest particle and it cannot be divided further into smaller particles. So, the first point is that atom is indivisible. Number two, he told that atom cannot be created and destroyed. So, according to John Dalton, we human beings cannot create an atom, cannot destroy an atom. Atom can neither be created nor be destroyed. Number three, he told that atom of one particular matter is showing all the properties of that compound and it is different from the other compounds. What does it mean? Suppose this pen. This pen is a form of matter and if we divide this pen, the smallest particle that we will get is an atom. So the atom inside this pen is different from the atom inside this board, which is instead different from the atom inside a book. So according to John Dalton, atom of a particular thing is showing all the properties of that thing, but it is different in all the respects from the other things. Number four, he told that atoms, when they react, they do so in a simple ratio. Suppose when they are combining, hydrogen and oxygen is combining to produce water. If we balance it, we get 2H2 plus O2 produces 2H2. So the ratio is 2 is to 1 is to 2. So when atoms combine, they do so in a definite ratio. And the ratio here is 2 is to 1 is to 2. And the number is always a whole number. We cannot balance the equation by half, by one third, by two fifth. So there is no question of a fraction. And what is the number five point? Atom is the smallest particle that can take part in a chemical reaction independently. The most important point. Atom, the atom is the smallest particle that can take part in a chemical reaction independently. Why? Because out of these five points, only this number five point is right and all the four points are wrong. Why wrong that we will discuss later. Today let us come to the topic the atom and its structure where after this postulates we will go directly into the structure of an atom. How? First, I want to tell that the first point that John Dalton told is atom is indivisible. That is, atom cannot be divided into smaller particles. But later it was seen that inside atom there are three particles that is electron, number two proton and number three neutron. These three particles are known as the subatomic particles of atom. Subatomic. As they are divisions of atom, so these particles are known as subatomic particles of atom. I am not going in the detailed discovery of electron, the detailed discovery of proton or neutron because it is not so important. We just read those just to know and have the idea how the subatomic particles was discovered. Now as we have to uh, focus on the important parts of this chapter, so I am skipping those parts, discovery of electron, proton and neutron. Instead, we just want to know that inside the atom we have the three subatomic particles that is electron and that is proton and that is neutron. Now if we little bit know about these particles we can tell that the first one electron, the first one electron, the main point of it is that it is a negatively charged particle. Proton, it is 
are positively charged particles. And neutron, it is a neutral particle, that is it doesn't have any charge, positive or negative. So electron is a negatively charged particle, proton is a positively charged particle, and neutron is a neutral particle. They have a definite amount of charge, and the amount is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. When it is for proton, the charge is plus. When it is for electron, the charge is minus. Because the charge of a proton and the charge of an electron both are same. Just their sign is different, plus and minus. In class 10, up to class 10 we can take, we will go for the simpler forms. That is, we will consider the charge of an electron as minus 1. And we will consider the charge of the proton is plus 1 instead of this big value. We will just know that the electron is minus 1, proton is plus 1, and neutron is 0. This is the first feature of this electron, proton, and neutron. The next feature, if I come, is that the mass. Electron is a very, very light particle, and its mass we consider as negligible. The mass of electron is negligible. Mass. Mass of an electron is negligible. And both the mass of proton and neutron we consider as 1 AMU. What is AMU? AMU stands for atomic mass unit. You see, we are discussing here about the subatomic particles of an atom. So, atom is only very small. We cannot even think of seeing an atom with our naked eye. And that also we are dealing about its subatomic particles. You know, if we uh, find out the mass of this electron and proton in gram and kg, the value of the mass of an electron is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. 10 to the power minus 31. So, you can imagine how much light a particle electron is, 10 to the power minus 31. The mass doesn't exist actually. We cannot even measure this mass, 10 to the power minus 31. So up to class 10, we will go for the simpler one, that is 1 AMU. AMU is the atomic mass unit. Measuring the mass of electron, proton and neutron in atomic mass unit helps us to give the concept about this small, small particles like electron, proton and neutron. So actually, electron is very light particle. It is lighter than proton and neutron by 1000 times. So we neglect the mass of an electron and we consider only the mass of proton and neutron, each one AMU. So the mass of an atom is the total number of protons and neutrons present in it. Like we tell that sodium, mass of sodium in A is 23 AMU. That means total number of neutrons and protons, n plus p, is equal to 23. The total number of neutrons and protons present in, inside sodium atom is 23. So this is the main thing that we should know about the atom and its subatomic particles. Next, we will come to the location of the subatomic particles inside the atom. Inside the atom, now we know that there is electron, there is proton and there is neutron. But how these particles are present inside the atom, that we don't know. Rutherford, one scientist, performed an experiment known as Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment to know the exact structure of an atom. After he performed the experiment, what is done in that experiment, I will tell you in very short words. He, what he did, he took a thin gold foil and he bombarded the gold foil. Bombarded means he collided the gold foil with fast moving particles. And by some observations, he concluded with two main points is that. Number one, inside the atom there is nucleus. And number two, an extra nuclear part.
Inside the atom, there is a nucleus and an extra nuclear part. Nucleus is originated at the center of the atom. And inside the nucleus, all the neutrons and the protons are located. I repeat, inside the atom, there is a nucleus at the center. And in the nucleus, all the neutrons and the protons are located. Around the nucleus, electrons are revolving in different shells or orbits and that part is known as the extra nuclear part. So, around the nucleus, the electrons are revolving in different shells or orbits just like the planets are revolving around the sun, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in different orbits or shells. And the atom is looking like, this is the nucleus and around the nucleus in different shells the electrons are rotating and these shells or orbits are having a definite capacity to accommodate the electrons. It randomly cannot have any number of electrons inside it. Suppose the first one. This one is the first shell, this one is the second shell, this one is the third shell. And what are their names? This is K shell, this is L shell, this is M shell. Starting from K, we will maintain the alphabetical order. K, L, M, N, O, P in this way. So the first shell is known as the K shell. Okay, in K shell, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated is 2. In the L shell, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated is 8. In the M shell, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated is 18. Next one, it is 32. So they follow the formula 2n square. What does this n represent? n is the alphabetical order 1, 2, 3, 4, starting from the number 1. For K shell, n is equal to 1. For L shell, n is equal to 2. For M shell, n is equal to 3. So following this formula, we can get the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in an atom is then first 2, then 8, then 18. So we cannot randomly accommodate the number of electrons inside an atom. So this is our basic structure of the atom. 